Good day, everybody. My name is Brent Heinemann. I'll be uh, doing your Friday Fundamentals session for today, August 25th. Uh, today's class is a bathroom design class, and uh, we're going to be covering a number of different items using SoftPlan 2018, which is our current release. Um, today's intent is that uh, you sit back, uh, enjoy, just uh, listen in, watch along, and uh, if you happen to, happen to have to leave or you've missed any part of this, um, these will be recorded and posted hopefully in the next week to two weeks to our website and YouTube. So you won't uh, miss out. You can always go and grab this stuff later on. So um, to get started, like I said, we'll be using 2018 of SoftPlan. And what we have here is a, um, a basic little floor plan. Yeah, it's going to be somewhat like a remodel job. We're going to be adding... Uh, a shower, uh, a vanity. Uh, we're going to customize the vanity a little bit. We're going to uh, draw in a, uh, a bathtub and we're going to take a look at different interior finishes and uh, different methods that you can use to add different textures to your walls and that sort of thing. Because as, as you know, with custom showers, that's the new thing uh, to put in highlight walls and stuff like that, highlight pattern uh, patches. So, um, what we are hoping to achieve, I'm just going to, uh, should be sharing my screen. So let me know if you don't see this when I, when I flip over to it. Uh, I'm just going to flip you into um, what some of the, some of the things that we have, I have been creating. Um, so I'm going to take you into, this is a ray traced uh, version of what we're going to look into today. So you can see a, a vanity. Uh, we're going to set those those cabinets up and try and put a shelf underneath, put some glass um, panel doors in, some stone on the back wall. It could be tile, could be whatever you want, want it to be. We're going to put in a glass shower. I'm going to show you uh, briefly how to define a wall that you can use for this. You, there's met different methods. I will cover um, at least uh, verbally on how to do them in different ways, but I wanted to show you how to do this using a, a transition material in our walls. Um, I'll show you a little bit clearer version of that in um, one that I created that is a textured view. Um, it's a little crisper. Uh, the one that I just showed you was what we call uh, path tracing. It takes um, hours and hours and hours. And just to give you an idea, I started that image at five o'clock yesterday and left the office. And when I came back in this morning, it had made 300 passes of a thousand passes that I had intended to make. Um, what it does is every time it makes a pass, it refines the image and gives it a little bit more uh, clarity. And um, so it would look a little bit uh, hazy just because it hadn't really completed. It should have been closer to 800 to 1,000 passes. So this is a textured view. It's a lot faster. It uses your hardware. But this has also been a little bit on the slow side because of the number of reflections that I have turned on in this uh, particular image. So you can see all the light shining off the floors and so on. You can see reflections in the countertop. You can see reflections of the bedroom in the, in the mirror for the bathroom, that kind of thing. So. Um, this is kind of what we're going to try to achieve by the end of the hour today. And uh, so, like I said, just sit back, relax, and um, hopefully you will pick up some uh, some tips along the way as to what we're, we're covering today. All right. So I'm just going to take us back to the actual drawing. Um, I've got a couple tabs open up here. I'm just going to close one of them out and um, drop into this one. I'm going to minimize my um, go to meeting here so I don't move it off the side there. There we go. So I'm going to flip this to a uh, shaded view, which is a, a one way we can work in here. I still have an interior finish drawn on that wall, so I'm going to erase that out. Let's see if I can do that from in here. No, it didn't work. And go back to my back into here. I'm going to flip this into interior mode. Yeah, there it is. Sorry, when I was cleaning out all the stuff, I, I missed that one because it was yellow. I didn't pick up on it. All right, so back into our shaded view. This gives you an idea of what we are working on today. Uh, top down view, just uh, shaded view is quick. 
it doesn't show you the actual texture. It kind of averages out the colors in the texture to give you a, an appearance similar to the colors that you would achieve through the texture, but um, it's fast. It gives you lines on the outside edges the way we have it set up. Um, so what we're seeing is a subfloor and bare, bare walls. There's no ceiling in here right now, so we can actually um, move move up and and take a look around from there. So I'm just using my arrow keys. I've got a combination of my arrow keys and my um, and my uh, mouse to move around. All right. So we are going to be working both in the plan as well as in the um, in the 3D. So you're going to get used to looking at both. Um, by all means, expect that there's going to be errors made that need to be corrected along the way. That is the nature of working in 3D and trying to design with this. Um, this sort of model, um, we are going to have to move things around. Sometimes we'll be drawing things and then moving them into place. So initially when they're placed, they may, be, may not be exactly where you want them, but then you just need to know how to go in and modify that as you go. All right. So we are going to uh, go back into the floor plan. I'm going to take us back to drawing mode. And we're going to start by adding in a tub over in this area. Now, there's different ways of drawing your tubs. The one we're going to draw today is a freestanding clawfoot tub. Uh, there are other tubs available, uh, many of them, and you may be actually framing out a box for a jacuzzi tub to sit in that's going to be tiled. There's a way of doing that as well. Um, if we have time at the end, maybe I will take you in and try and draw one of those for you. Uh, the trick there is draw it as a countertop. Um, then you can go into the actual symbol similar to a sink and actually set count, cut countertop, cuts countertop, and that will allow it to actually sit down into that without you having to do a lot of extra work to cut out the hole for the for the tub to sit in. So that's a little trick. If we don't get around to it, that's one way of doing it. But I'm going to go to draw symbol, and we are going to take a look at where you can find the majority of your symbols. So right now I'm in the very basic bathroom library. And you can see these are these have been around for a long time. These, these are your standards, um, really good go-tos. But if you're looking for more, you can go into the SoftPlan Plus. For those of you who are subscribers to the SoftPlan Plus uh, program, you will have access to uh, limitless uh, symbols because we're going to continually add to these as time goes on. Um, in the next day to two days, you should see some new stone textures come out. Last week, we put some books out prior to that. Um, we were putting some furniture out. Uh, we've put some different rugs and that sort of stuff. That all just appears. So that will come down to your computer as you click on those libraries. So it's always good to go and check on those. So anywhere that you see a soft plan plus. So there's one nested under the bathroom. Uh, we're going to go down to manufacturer. And these are all the ones that are typically installed on your machine. But then if you click on the SoftPlan Plus, if you are a subscriber, you'll have this option. And then you'll see additional um, symbols appear there. These libraries are essentially empty until you actually click on them, at which time we go and we grab the 2D and the 3D and we download it onto your system. So you will need an active internet connection that's uh, imperative, when you're, especially when you're working with SoftPlan Plus. If you are not using symbols you've already drawn before. If you've used that library before, it's already on your system and you'll have access to it. But the first time in, you will need that. So we're going to start by adding in uh, Vilroy and Bosch. So I'm going to slide down. I don't think it fell to the top. No, it did not. So there it is. And inside Vilroy and Bosch, you will see um, a number of different um, different lines, and some of them are very small. Some of them don't have a lot in them. But for instance, this is the one we want, the BQ, uh, big long number, 175CEA7V. So it's just a, a standard little claw, to, claw foot uh, tub. We're going to just move the dialog off to the side. And remembering that if you look at the 2D view of anything, that's going to indicate the bottom is where the insertion point is, and then um, then you move up from there. So in this case, we want it to spun around 180 degrees from that. So I'm going to start at this side and draw it like that. It will automatically snap to your walls. Um, 
with a standard tub, just a quick note, a uh, standard tub is always going to snap to your wall. Um, the difference being with a tub is that typically those tubs have the uh, backer board come down on top of the flange, it's like inside of that. So the tub is actually inserted right up to the studs. Um, so we will typically uh, place the symbol right up to the drywall. That's why you'll see that it's sitting just away from the wall because there's actually a half inch drywall on that wall. I'll zoom that up so you can see a little better. I'll just close this out. So you can see that the tub is sitting there and it's sitting just away from it over here as well. In this case, we want to pull it well, well away. On a standard you know, five foot tub that you have at the end of your bathroom, you're going to actually move that up a half an inch and over a half an inch to get it up to the stud region, all right? So to move this, uh, we're just gonna to go to move. Um, if you're ever having trouble moving items, uh, so if I was to move this wall, the tub would go with it because the attach option is on up here. Turning the attach option off allows us to move items independently of the items that are in their vicinity. Um, what attach is supposed to do is that if I move a wall and I've got a row of cabinets and symbols along it, I can move the wall and all those items that are attached to the wall should go with it. So it's a very useful tool, but detrimental in some cases. So you may need to turn it off. Now, because I'm moving the tub and I'm not moving the wall, I should be okay. So I can just move that away. Okay, and I can move it to wherever I want. Um, believe I have my temporary dimensions turned off at the moment. I do. So now when I move, you should see a temporary dimension appear. Um, I've, I've been doing some testing, so I had it turned off. The neat thing is that when you're, when you're moving these items around, you can see that there, but you can also click on it. If you do it Right after you finish the move, you can actually uh, click on that item and I can say I want to move that 12 inches and I can actually move that item away. And now when I move on to the next command, those dimensions will disappear. So I can edit this one. I can say I want to make it eight inches and I want to move the left. So it's going to move the tub over eight inches for, for me at that point. Okay, so that's uh, temporary dimensions. If they drive you crazy, system options, um, you just go into your setup options there and you can you can turn them off. All right. Um, there, everyone seems to have differing opinions on whether they like them or don't like them. There's times when they're great and other times people just say they, they'd rather they put the dimension in themselves. Your choice. Okay, it's there for you. Now we're going to add some faucets in behind here. Here again, um, we're going to be going into the Softland Plus, into the Hands Grow um, line of, of uh, plumbing fixtures. And we're going to pick on an Axor. So I'm going to go back into Symbol. And this time, just because I know the name of it and I don't really want to uh, go looking too much, I could actually just type, type in tub filler and it'll automatically come up with a whole list here. So I know that the one that I want is the um, Axor Montro two handle tub. So yeah, there it is. Okay, so it's one that will stand on the floor and I simply click and I can place it. And then I can move that item to where I want it to go. I want to get the hose outside of the tub and I want to, um, now you're seeing where the, uh, the dimensions are getting picked up when I actually just want to click on the symbol. So there we go. Okay, now let's take a look at our 3D just to see what we've got going on there. It's just over here to the side, and there you go. All right. So there's our tub. We've moved it. We've added our faucet um, and uh, shower handle onto that. The next thing we're going to move on to is I'm going to jump right into drawing in the shower itself. We won't be spending any time on drawing the toilet. It's much like drawing the tub. It's in its own little room at the end here. Uh, it's already been drawn in. So we're going to march right along and, and get our shower drawn in, which is going to be a glass enclosed shower with a curb. Um, later on, we will finish that off a little bit with some different finishes, and I'll uh, show you how to use the interiors to um, attach different textures, and we can use solids as well to finish that off. So we're going to be working down in this area over here. So we'll just move that over there and... Um, 
going to jump back to our drawing and zoom back into that area. So just a, a quick little talk about the actual wall definition that we're going to use in here. So I'm going to go into my drawing options because I know that I have it there. Uh, when you're defining a wall, always wise to define it at your system options. You can then bring it into your project level and you can bring that that particular wall list right into your uh, drawing level if you already have a drawing created. If you dry, define it at the system level and you create a new project, obviously all those walls are taken right into that project and subsequently right into your drawing as well. So um, this one here, we're going to go into define. I'm going to go into edit. And we have two of them up here. I was playing around a couple days ago. Um, I did a, a tile base with a glass door above or or glass above, and I actually did it up with all the wall materials. Now, the only downside to that is um, there's a lot of upsides to it in that it will actually count all the proper materials, the plates, and whatever you have in that wall, depending on how high it is, and that's and studs and so on. Um, the only downside is when I do, do transitions from one height to the to a lower height, the ends of the walls aren't typically capped off. Um, it's only the lower wall would be. So. In, in lieu of that, I've also created one called solid base, solid tile base with glass glass above, a much simpler wall. So you can see that the first one had a lot of materials, had tile and uh, drywall, glass. So I put in backer board and all that stuff. Um, the other one, it's very simple. It's really only two materials. I have two materials listed in here called none. Um, the only reason I've put in the none materials is so that when I cut through the wall, um, my cut height is uh, display height here is at 48 inches. You can set that where you want it. Um, it's also depicted here with that dash line, the green dash line. So it shows that I'm cutting through where the glass is. But um, at the glass, all I would see is what I'm cutting through. So what I've done is I put a none material in that is as wide as the, the curb down below and run it all the way up so that when I'm cutting through there, I can actually show a line that shows where the curb would be as well as showing the glass because I'm not going to be cutting through both items at any one time. And likewise, down below, I put in a none material for the glass. So take those two items away and I'm really just left with glass above and tile down below. The tile I've made it five and a half inches. I've made it 42 inches high. That's, um, I'll get to that in a second. I've made it the half of the height of the wall. I've made it a seven foot wall. I haven't taken it all the way to the top. That's totally arbitrary. It's up to you. Um, and I've also made the glass 42 inches and it sits on top of the tile. Okay. Um, the glass is a half of an inch thick. So it's width is half inch. The, the base is five and a half. The height is 42 and 42. So I'm only looking at these th these two lines here right now. The other two, the top and the bottom one, the, the two nuns, um, we'll disregard those for now. Okay, neither of these are fixed. Uh, items that are fixed are typically your plates, things that when you change the height of the wall, those thicknesses don't change. So those would not want to be fixed. We want these to be flexible all the time when we're changing the height. Um, I've also changed the glass to show solid and make it blue so that when I draw it, it actually jumps out at you. You can see that it's a, a glass wall. I've set the glass to the outside of the wall. There again, that's some, something that's out to, up to you. It's sitting closer to the outside of the curb than the inside, all right? Uh, which also means that when we draw the door, we're gonna make a slight adjustment to move the door out so it sits flush with the outside of the glass. So, so um, this is all just about visibility and how you want these to look in plan, um, whether it has a texture, whether it doesn't, and so on. Okay. Now, the, the big thing, that the thing that's new to 2018 is our transition material height. And I've set that right at 42 inches, which is right where the curb and the glass transition from one to the other. What the transition height allows us to do, and uh, this is a, a great tool when you're doing wainscoted walls, and that's why I was uh, giving this a, a test run through with the shower doors, because it's allowed to be a really good fit, is it allows you to have a wall that's one wall, but it could have a 42 inch tile wall, or it could have a six inch tile wall, like a curb, and it's the same wall. So I can just set that. When I draw the wall, I can then edit the transition height. That is set right here. Okay, so this is new to this version and uh, something that's very useful. All right, so with that, uh, with that quick little tour done, I'm going to um, 
Let's pick OK, and we're going to go in and actually draw this wall now. So we're going to use a solid tile base with glass above, and I'm going to pick OK. And I'll measure this off later, but I want it about four feet. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to draw it down. I'm going to put the glass to the outside. Because it's not symmetrical, it's going to ask me to click which side the, um, the glass is or the outside is. Because it's a non-symmetrical wall, it, it's going to ask me that question. All right. And we can dimension that up. So I'm just going to run one here. This one. There, something like that. Okay, that gives us lots of room for our vanity. I could have made it a little bigger, but uh, gives you the idea. All right, now let's take a look at our shaded view. And there you go. Pretty neat. Now, we're going to play around with this a little bit more in that um, with this wall, currently I've got it running all the way out at, at 42 inches high. Let's say that's not really what I want to do. So what I can do is I can go to Tools, I can say Insert Break, and I can break the wall, and I can break the wall again, and I can pull some extensions off, and dimension this back. So in fact, I've actually broken this into three separate walls. I can edit this um, dimension here. I'm going to make it uh, 24 inches, and I'm going to make this one... Oh, let's make it uh, 12 inches left. And then this one is whatever's left over because we're this is to the outside. Okay. And when we look at the 3D shaded, it's not going to look that different, but you can kind of pick up when you get it at the right angle, you can see that there's a, there's a break in the glass there. So now what we're going to do is take a look at editing these walls. So this is where the transition height falls in. So um, I'm editing the first wall. It's wall height. Overall to total wall height is seven feet. But if I go to transition, I can actually change this down. I can make it uh, three feet. Pick OK. So it drops down. This one over here, the far one, I'm going to make it six inches. And I'm going to repeat that change to the one around the corner. What's really cool is that I can actually change this one now. So I can edit this, this wall here. And I, when I go to transition, you notice that there was actually an option to slope it as well. So I can actually change it from, um, I have to think about this in plan, which one is the right and which one is the left. So this is the right, this is the left, even though we're looking at it in the opposite direction. I could spin it around, you'd be able, it'd make more sense to you. But uh, so the left, we're going to take it down a foot. So I'm going to make it um, two feet. And the right, I'll make that three feet because that's what the other one is. And there you go. Okay, so it may not be aesthetically pleasing is what you, you, you would actually implement, but I wanted to give you a, a good taste of what the transition wall is capable of. It's not just square cuts up and down, but it also allows you to actually slope the wall. So if you want to do something a little bit different, you could actually curve this wall and, and put a slope to it if you really wanted to. Okay, um, you could really dress it up. So now we're going to come along and we're going to draw in our door. So I'm going to take you into interior door. We're going to go to shower. I'm going to put in a 20 by 28 by 80 glass. And we'll just drop that in right there. And I'm going to take a look at that in plan. Oops, one. And it's going the wrong way. So I'm going to edit that. And the other thing you can do is simply um, backspace out and then try to draw your opening in again. Um, sometimes I do find adding the openings in plan is easier because I have a better control over which side it's gonna, it's gonna flip to. So I can just pick that, and then when I'm hovering over it, it will actually flip in the direction I want, and that's the way I want it right there. So now when we take a look at this in shaded view, you're gonna see that the door is actually sitting inside. Um, I fully expected that, 
But when I edit the door, um, I can go into my frame offset, because right now the frame offset is set to, uh, the door is actually gonna go to that side of the wall. So I can actually change this to 4.5 inches, which should pull it out flush with the other glass. Okay, the other thing we want to do is move it up. We want this door to go up um, bottom of wall to bottom of opening. Um, I'm just going to make it uh, 6.125 inches just to get it. Uh, just to get it up over the curb. And then we can also change its height slightly to uh, bring it down. So I'm going to. And I, I can modify the actual height of this opening by clicking on this and we can bring it down to say six foot six inches just so you can see it's probably going to be an eighth of an inch high but I can you can modify that if you needed to okay gives you the idea of what we're trying to achieve here oh I just undid my stuff today I hit I got out of that sorry about that I'm just going to go back in and make those changes again six inches and change its height down. That's something to be careful of. When you're in 3D, uh, you, you tend to go to your arrow keys and start moving around, but if you're still in an edit, you're still moving around in there, and that's why I canceled out of that, because I had been moving around and I didn't want to impact what I put into the edit. Consequently, I lost the changes that I'd made by doing that. So. That gives you an idea on how to draw your, your glass doors in your shower. Uh, one of the last things I'll just quickly take you into, when you're drawing the actual door, you can go into your um, miscellaneous and you can change your hardware. So you can select hardware here. I sometimes just go in and I pick the um, cabinet hardware and I just put in that one. Same thing here. Oops. Yeah, that's good. And there we go. So there is one there. You just can't see it so much because the glass is semi opaque. Um, when we want to check that, we can simply go to the icon up here, Surface Edit, and you can click on your glass. And when you go into your options, you'll see how opaque it is. So we're we're at 30%. Uh, so we can um, we can see through 70%, and 30% uh, is opaque that we cannot see through. So if I want it to be more clear, I can keep dropping that down a little bit. Um, you can change your uh, your emissive and your 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 ambient to brighten it up. Your emissive will, would be if, the, if light was hitting it, it would actually glow. We don't really want that here. We will see that on our lighting fixtures if we get to that today. So that is something you would do on a light fixture, so that when you turn the light bulb on inside, the globe should glow a bit, and that's what the emissive option will do for you. Okay, we're going to move on to um, Next thing we're going to take a look at is drawing in our, our actual vanities and so on. So we're going to uh, save our drawings. We don't want to lose anything we've done so far. And um, I'm just going to work in this area. I'm going to erase these dimensions out. We don't need them anymore. Now, we're going to deal with the, the vanity a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to show you how to draw some vanity options, but we're also going to uh, mess around with it a little bit to get a little bit of a different design. If you remember, the, uh, the, the vanity was sitting, so it had two base cabinets that went right down on feet, but these intermediate, the in, inside ones are actually floating up. And then we've added a shelf down below, which has uh, been drawn with a rod and shelf. There's different ways of modifying your cabinets. This is just one way of adding something in. Um, 
So we're going to take a look at that as well. So um, coming back to the drawing, I'm going to go to draw a cabinet and I'm going to go to vanity. And so the type is vanity because that's where we selected it directly from the menu. But if you pick the wrong one, you can always change it here. Okay, so you have desks and bases and walls and talls. Uh, the standard shape just means it's a square box along a flat wall. So uh, then you get into your different shapes, whether it's a 45 degree corner, angled corners, that sort of thing. So we're going to go with standard. Um, when I want to choose a different face layout, I can come in here and I can define. I want one door and I want one drawer and it's going to come up with different options for me. Okay, so there's my standard one door, one drawer flat thing. Um, and I'm just going to pick I'm going to pick OK on that, and I want to make this one. So I've got my face pan, my face style, and I'm going to make it an 18-inch wide cabinet, and I'm going to draw it right there. It automatically finds that showered wall. That's fine for now. We can move it later, um, but it's automatically going to try and snap to walls. That's what cabinets will do. All right. The next cabinet we're going to draw is um, – there's different ways to do this um, – you could draw another vanity cabinet with two drawers and then set it to a different height and then move it up. I'm going to try a different method, um, something that's a little more designed for hanging off of a wall without a base underneath it would be a desk cabinet. So anywhere that you don't have, well, basically where you have knee space, something to sit underneath. So I'm going to put in a desk. Now the difference here is that the automatic width or depth for a desk cabinet is 24 inches. The vanities were set to 21. Okay, the um, the height may not be what we want it to be, so I'm going to make it say uh, I think I was doing 12 inches, and the top height I'm going to set to 30.5 inches, which will match up with our vanities that are there. And for the face, I want to put in uh, no doors, but I want to put in two drawers. So I'm just going to look for something. Two drawer, that's good. Okay, and 30 inch width is what I'm going to go for. So oh, I didn't keep my drawer option there. And I'm just going to drop that in next to it. Oh, I got the wrong depth again. Back that out. Width is 30, depth changed to 28 on me when I went through this. So I want that at 21 and my top height is right. Let's try that again. Drop it in. Perfect. We're going to drop a second one in. Now, not that I'm lazy, but I don't want to have to go through and find the other cabinet that we had at the other end there. So I can just go to draw select, which is the top left corner. You may have wondered what that is. Uh, what Draw Select does is it takes a look at the item you click on. So you pick Draw Select, then you click on an item, and then you can click and drop that same item anywhere else on the drawing. So if you spend a lot of time getting a window all customized with trim and grills and so on, and then they say, can we add another window in this wall? You're like, oh, crud, now I've got to go and I've got to add the window. I've got to change all the grills and change all the trim. Well, you don't. Just go to Draw Select and click on it and drop it in. Okay. Um, I mean, you could draw it and then do a duplicate, but this the draw select basically draws it as a duplicate. All right. And what we're going to do now is just move this up. Let's get it away from the wall there. So there we got some, some space. And let's take a look at our 3D shaded. Let's spin that around a bit. And there we go. Looks pretty slick. Walked right into the wall. There you go. Okay. Now, um, like I said, there's different ways to draw these cabinets in the middle. They could be vanities. And the, the only downside is the vanity will come in. And if you try to put feet on something, they will come along with it as well. Sorry. I had a quick question there. Someone had asked me why under the shower door it looks like I don't have a surface. Um, I can probably answer that very quickly without even looking at it. If you remember when I first put the door in, I offset it up uh, six and an eighth of an inch. Um, that was to get the door sill 
out of that space. Uh, when I did put it back in, I just put it at the six inches. So it, uh, sometimes you do want to leave that extra eighth of an inch um, or just any fraction of an inch just to get stuff out of there. Um, so you can, so I'm thinking you're, you're, you're looking there. You can see a bit of it clipping in and out as I move around. You can see at the, at the bottom of the door. So what you can do to it, to um, accommodate that is edit this. And uh, it's a very good question because you picked up on something that I wasn't sure anyone would even notice, but you did, which is good. Um, so by just setting that up, that gets the door itself because the door actually thinks it's going through the entire wall. Uh, by getting it up off of the curb just that little bit, which is what it would really do, will uh, eliminate that little bit. Um, it also means that I should really change this to uh, six foot five point eight seven five inches in height to get it down flush with the other glass. All right, so that's all that is. That's a good question. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna be running out of time, so I'm gonna really try and move along here. Um, Whacking into that door there. There we go. So a couple things we'll do with this cabinet. Um, I want to edit the ends. Um, when you're looking at the cabinet run, um, we we have we have toe kicks in there right now. But if I wanted to go into accessories, I can actually put legs under these. Um, I might not like the ones that came in initially, so I can come in here. I can go to 3D, which gives me a good idea what they look like. I'm going to put some tapered legs in there. Um, so that will pop those in for you. Um, shouldn't really have gotten any under the desks because they are a desk. But what you can do then is you can edit these. And I can take... Edit this one and go to my common tab so you can out of cleanup. And then I should be able to set my legs accordingly after that. I'll take a look. We, we are taking a look right now at actually different ways of getting the legs in there without um, having them on those those particular cabinets. But if I was to explode this into individual cabinets so they don't bind to each other, that would allow me to actually place them on the individual pieces uh, much easier. Um, the other way would be put a wall cabinet in here, which would not have any uh, legs under it, and that would also work. Um, the upside of doing a wall cabinet would be that we could actually put in valance lighting that would shine down in this area. Okay, so uh, just something else to take a look at. But I'm going to move along just because uh, in the interest of time, we do want to get this moved along uh, before we run out of time. So I'm going to edit this end cabinet here as well. And when I go to the, uh, the vanity cabinet itself, I can... Um, or the face, and I'm going to do a custom face. And in here for the door, if I want to put glass in, I can simply come in and pick a custom option there. And then I can repeat edit that change down to this one to get the glass in that one. Um, on this one in particular, I'm going to also come in and do my face and reverse it so that the handles face to the inside as opposed to both on the left side. Okay, because I did just draw a standard cabinet, but there is a reverse option, so you can flip your, your handles to one side or the other. Okay, um, to add the, the shelf, I'm going to take us back into here. And this is a little bit of a trick, but um, I'm going to go to draw. And we're going to go to rod and shelf, and I'm going to start by drawing right here to there. And then I'm going to edit that rod and shelf. 
and I'm going to turn off the rod because we don't want a rod in there. And we're also going to change its offset. Typically, it's going up six feet. We want it to just take it up six inches. So we want it to sit down low, uh, right, right underneath that cabinet. Okay. And we can take a look at what we've done here by just going back to our shaded view, and you can see the shelf sitting right there. So that's one way of getting one drawn in without having to actually mess around with the open cabinets and so on. Now, if we want to change the actual finish on any of these cabinets, we can also do that right in the actual cabinets. And I'm going to go to a uh, cherry dark and pick OK. And I'm going to repeat that change. Here. No, it's because I have them exploded at the moment. That's why they're behaving a little bit differently. Um, while they are exploded, I should be able to also turn off my turn on my legs. Accessories. Um, I'm going to edit this one here, and I'm going to change it to Cherry Dark as well. There we go. And make sure that, that one is the same. I think it already is. Okay. So by exploding these into four separate cabinets, turning their cleanup off so they don't reconnect to each other, I was able to get rid of the legs, uh, it's just uh, it's a little more work that way, that's all. The other thing we can do in here, you might have noticed in the others, is that there's actually shelves in the actual cabinet. So you can go into the vanity cabinet, you can click on the shelf option. You're remembering that you have to look for the little check boxes because they don't expand until you actually click on them. If we had them all expanded, the dialogues would be too big and um, confusing. Uh, there'd, there'd be too much too much going on. So uh, by clicking on them, you will expand those items. And you can set the depth of this down to 20 inches so it doesn't sit right up to the front if you wish. And pick OK. Repeat that change down to this one. And it'll add that shelf in. Oh, I didn't pick up on the repeat. I will just edit it. There we go. All right. A couple other things we're going to add in here. Um, we're going to next. We're going to add in our vanities, our 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 basins. Sorry, into the vanities. So I'm going to click on this one, and you can see that we can actually add taps and sinks directly from the cabinet now, which is going to plop it right on right in the middle of it for you, which is really slick. Um, what it may not do because of the especially the style that we're putting in is they will probably stack on top of each other, but then it's just a simple move up and down vertically to get them into place. So we're going to go to the sink. Now for this sink, um, I'm going to put in a Vilroy and Bosch. Um, it's a 411060, so I'm just going to jump. You know how to look for stuff now, so we're just going to look for it there. And I'm going to pick OK. And there it is. Um, put in the tap. Uh, for that one, we are going to put in the um, Brizo Charlotte brush nickel two-handle widespread vessel lab faucet. So thinking of something to um, search on, you can go to Brizo and vessel. We can just do vessel faucet. And there was a Charlotte two handle. And that is the one right there. So we pick OK. Now you'll see that see, it stacks. So the, the sink was told to stack on the cabinet. The cabinet, uh, the, the faucets were told to stack on top of the, the vessel itself. So what we can do then is uh, I'm going to repeat edit this change over to this one to get them there. In this case, it, it read the faucet first and then the, and then the vessel. No big deal. These are easily moved. 
Let's move it down until it starts to disappear into the cabinet. Sometimes an interior elevation might be a good way to work with this. Um, same thing here. And I can spin this around. Move in a little bit to see those a little bit better when I'm placing them. Okay, that gives you a quick idea of what, what you can do with those. And we're going to then go to uh, draw a symbol. I'm gonna go straight up to uh, bath. Here again, I can just type in mirror. I wanna look for a mirror. So we have some um, tag words that have been attached to symbols. We've tried our best to find ones that would um, that would work. This is all I want. Yes. And I'm just going to place it right on that wall there. I can back it out a bit. And it's going to shift us down a little bit. And then you also can adjust stuff right in here. So if you're not looking for accuracy, you can just pick these, these items up and stretch them out however you please. All right. And there you go. So if we're back on the actual plan, you will see that it is actually attached to the wall at that point. And um, now it's just a matter of adding a few more items to dress this up. And then we'll get into some textures and finishing off the, uh, the shower a little bit more. All right. So um, lighting. Lighting is important. And you notice that we didn't have a ceiling drawn in initially. Um, so what we will do now is I'll, I'll, I'll jump ahead and I'll actually put in um, the ceiling and some finishes. And I'll show you different ways of doing it. Not to say these are going to be complete because of the, the, the walls that we have in here, but I'll explain that a little bit further as we go. Um, and then we can uh, drop in some pot lights into the ceiling and we'll put some two uh, wall sconces on either side of the mirror so that we have our lighting on that, that area as well. So I'm going to drop us into what we call room mode real quick. What room mode does, and you'll see it over here, is it will drop in your, your baseboard, your flooring, your ceiling, your wall finishes, your chair rail, your crown molds with one single click. So they can be pre-configured to add all those items in for you, just like that, uh, which is really cool. Uh, the only downside is that along here, we do have a transition from a painted wall to a um, to a shower wall, and I don't want the paint going around the shower. I want it to uh, stop at that corner. So it's not going to work necessarily for us today, but um, just to, to show you the ease at which you do it, you simply click. I just erase that one, but I go into room, and I can just simply go to bath, and I just click in that room. Um, I'm going to add one over top, and in it goes, okay? And it's that simple, and that's what adds all those finishes in for you. Um, if I did add one in here, it would leave the shower out, but I would also get a finish going around there. That's not to say that it doesn't get me some of the way. I can always come back in to interior mode, which is what it is, where it's added the items individually, and um, I can erase the ones that I don't want at that point as well. So... Um, BB is baseboard, and we've actually put the profile right in there so you can see what it is. Um, FL is for floor. It's ceramic number one. Wall covering is paint number seven. So we're, we're uh, doing a better job at actually showing you exactly what they are without you having to edit them. But you can come in here, and you can edit the ceramic one and, that, and so on. All right. So the other way to add this stuff in is to uh, manually draw it where we are right now in interior mode. So I'm going to erase a couple of the items that aren't gonna work for us, like the wall covering is gonna go away. We'll put that one in manually. Uh, the baseboard, I don't want baseboard going around my shower base. I want it to be tiled. Um, I do have my flooring in there. I can edit that and I can change it to whichever one I want. Um, uh, you, you can leave it on ceramic and you can change that over. You can, you can draw in what you need. Um, there's stone tiles. There's all kinds of things you can, you can add to this. So we are also going to go in and I'm going to put in um, tile one. Oh. I'm going to 
draw into one, sorry. I'm going to put tile 2 in here. And I can do an auto trace because it should be contained within the walls. As long as the walls close in, you can do an auto trace. Okay, uh, we're going to put in some baseboard. So I'll just put in the standard old baseboard. I'm going to manually trace that in. So I'm going to zoom out just enough that I can see all my walls. I'm going to start here and I'm going to trace that around. You don't have to be super accurate. And we're going to stop it right at this junction here. And then right click to say you're all done. Okay, uh, wall covering. Let's put in paint too. Uh, manual trace again because I want to stop at the shower. And in it goes. Okay, we've got baseball. I don't need crown roll. We're good. All right. Let's take a look at what we have. So you can see that we've added some color. We've added our baseboard in. It looks nice. Um, and I'm just going to spin us around so we can see the actual shower area now. And what we're going to do now is add in some wall coverings to the, uh, the actual shower area. <clears throat> so I'm going to zoom that up. We're going to save the drawing because we've been doing some work in here. And I'm going to go to wall covering. And this time I'm going to put in stone tile one. And I'm going to start to the outside where the paint ended. And bring it around to there. Okay. I'm also going to go into my ceiling mode. I haven't added a ceiling in here yet. Actually, I still have one left from before, but um, I will erase that out. That came in when we did the uh, room, but I want, to, I want to show you how to actually add a ceiling in ceiling mode. So you simply come up to ceiling, and you can do an auto trace in here. And like I said, it's, it's going to miss the shower. But it automatically tries to find the lowest wall height to connect to, which happens to be the shower because I left those at seven feet high. But you can fix that by simply going to Tools, click on your Fillet command, and click on this edge and this edge. And that will eliminate the shower. It'll, it'll form a 90-degree corner of those two edges. And it then goes looking for a new plate height, and it finds the top of the eight-foot walls at that point. All right? So... Um, we're going to go back to drawing mode. Now we are running out of time. We are getting close to the end. We are almost done. So if you um, care to stick around, I will finish this off as best I can. Uh, it might take us just a little bit over the hour. But if you do need to leave, I fully understand it's Friday, places to go, people to meet. And uh, I appreciate that you spent the time to, um, uh, to, to watch our session today. And I hope you've picked up some really cool tips. We do have some neat stuff coming up. I'm going to be drawing a niche in the wall into the shower for like shampoo bottles and soap and so on. And then we're going to apply some different solids in there and uh, take a look at textures and so on uh, a little bit further. But we are pretty close to the, to the end. And I uh, just wanted you to know that if you do have to leave, I totally understand. Uh, and I just thank you for joining us today. So to continue on, um, you can see the, the, that we have that texture in there now. And um, this wall here, for instance, I can now go in, if we look in textured mode, I'm going to warn you, this could look pretty pretty scary. Um, it, it, they're default, default textures that are applied, not necessarily what you really want to have in there. But um, I'm also going to show you some, some things you can do for yourself. Um, as interior decorators you, you, or designers, you may have a better idea of what textures you want to put on something. You may have a good place to source them. Um, I want to encourage you to actually go out there and look for this stuff, and uh, you might uh, really like to put some of this, uh, some of these different textures in yourself. So I'm going to zoom into the shower. Now, remember, I have to get past the glass because the glass is going to get in the way. Now, if I wanted to change these to match the gray slate that I have over here, there's a neat tool called Surface Copy Paste. Okay, You can find it under Edit, Surface Copy Paste, or this little icon that looks similar to it right here. Click on the texture that you like, click on the wall that you want to copy it to, and bam, it's there. All right, It's a really slick way to get it um, textures to copy over. Um, now, to, to do the floor on this one, um, I wanted to show you something different. It's a surface edit. Edit that surface. Now, I don't like what we have there so much, 
but I want to change that. So I can go to the texture color, and you can see that we have uh, all different textures you can pick from. I could put in something like that if I wanted to. Uh, I could pick a different color if I wanted to. These are good for backsplashes and so on as well. Um, but what I did do uh, prior to today's class is I went, and in this case, I went to the uh, Wayfair site. They have so much stuff there you can pick from. Um, not only do they have textures, they also have 3D symbols, which um, are, are downloadable, and then you can use our wizard to import those. Uh, that's for another day, though. That's a, a little bit more involved, but it's a really great way. If you see a table that you like, you can actually get their SKP or SketchUp file from their site and then bring it in and... Uh, it's a true representation of what you want to put in their house. But I went in there and I downloaded a few things. I didn't spend any time on these to make sure they match up well. All I did was I simply took um, a Riverstone tile and I cropped it off. And surprisingly, it, I don't even see the seams really. They're not that obvious. Um, so it actually looked really good. What it is missing is the grout, so just keep your your, your images out to a distance. Uh, this is exactly how you'd buy it, attached to the mat without any grout. But I liked the, the appearance of it. Now, if I wanted to change the sizing of it at all to make it smaller, that's where the horizontal and vertical comes from. It's probably based off the original texture that was there. So if I drop that down to, say, two feet and, um, and make this two feet, that'll, that'll reduce the size, meaning the tiled space that they, they lay side by side is is two feet by two feet so you can slightly see some lines in there but actually not too bad at all and all i did was i took the image saved it i put it in my 3d um, textures bitmaps folder i made a folder called my downloads and then i just cropped it out now ideally what you want is to make sure that whatever's on the left side matches the right side and you'll see that a little bit more i'm going to put a, a flooring in that um will give you a bit more of an indication of that that lack of tiling that I, I didn't spend the time to put it in. But I'm going to edit this floor here. Here again, I'm going to go to um, my downloads that I put in. Now, this is just a folder I created and put it in. And I liked this wood look um, uh, tile flooring. Uh, could be could be laminate, it could be tile. And there again, you can play around to make it wider or, or whatever you need to. Uh, this is a fairly large sample of it. And you can see a slight junction line there, but given the texture that it's being that's used, it's, it's not that obvious. Okay, and I can rotate it so it runs the other direction in the floor. I can change its, um, its opacity. I can, I can um, make it less, less, less shiny. Uh, you know, I can make it more reflective or less reflective. I wanted a matte finish. I can I can do that as well. Okay. Now, right now, we don't have reflections turned on, so be careful. When you do turn them on, they take time. If anything's going to take time to generate, it's it's uh, an image that has a lot of reflections. And like I said, um, normally I'd get through a 800 or a 1,000 passes on a path trace within a few hours. Um, the number of reflections and lights and stuff that I had in this model, it took a, a lot longer than that to get through 300. So you just have to be careful. And the size of the, the model that you're doing as well is gonna have an impact. So this gives you a good idea. Um, I'm also going to come in and we're gonna go to here, save our drawing. Now I'm gonna draw in a niche in this wall. So I'm gonna go to opening and niche has its own category here. We just want a small square one. Um, so I'm going to put in a 12 by 24, and I'm going to place it on this wall right here. So I'll move it out there. And I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to change its um, offset, bottom of wall to bottom of opening. I'll just set it to four feet, so that's easy to remember. And I'm going to make it, so if I want to change the size, I uncheck the product code option, and I can make this two feet by 18 inches, something like that, okay? And I'm going to pick OK. And we can take a look at what that looks like if we come back out. And you can now see it cut in the, in the wall over here. All right. And in textured mode, it will take on the, 
it'll take on the texture of the wall that it's placed in. So you can see the glass over top of it, but you can see that back in there. And if we come back in here, now if I wanted to put something different in the back of that, I can edit this a little bit deeper. Ideally, it wouldn't be on an outside wall, so just ignore the fact we put it on an outside wall. Um, I'm going to make its depth something like uh, 4.5 inches, and I'm going to go to Draw, Solid. I'm going to do a plane, and I'm going to use the F11 command. And just click, click, and then I'm going to edit that. So right-clicking on any item will give you the two choices that it found under the cursor, or three or four or five choices, and allows you to pick on which one you want. So this um, solid plane is essentially that. It's a vertical plane um, that I can attach a texture to and make it look however I want it to look. So its height was 18 inches. Its length is correct at two feet because I used F11 snaps to, uh, to connect those up. And if I go into common, I have an offset of um, 4 foot 11.625 inches. And you're saying, why'd you put the 11 and 5 eighths in there? Um, a lot of items reference the bottom of the wall or the top of the floor. Um, these will not know that, that field. And so they are going to reference the bottom of my floor system, which is 11 and 5 eighths. So I have to add that in. All right. And I'm going to pick OK. And I'm also going to remember that I have drywall there. So I have to pick on this and I'm going to pick move and I'm going to move it out at least a half an inch in front. So I'll just be generous with it. Oops. I'll just leave it out where it was. Sometimes a little finicky. There we go. I just need to zoom in a little bit closer. Now we can um, drop back into our 3D textured view. And I have a stone texture applied to these already. So you can see that it, it's, it's going to give me that. And I can then go in and I can draw another solid in behind where I want to put my faucets and so on. Um, so that, that gives you an idea of what you can do to finish that off. I'm going to jump over to doing the lighting. If we have time, we will come back to finishing that off. But for now, what I want to do is get some lights in and some pot lights up above so we have some lighting happening in this, in this model. So I'm going to go back to, say, electrical mode, which is essentially your floor plan with a lot of items turned off that would clutter up the drawing. And then you can, you can draw in all your electrical. It just makes it a little bit easier and uh, easier to see. So I'm going to go to ceiling lights. I'm going to go to a four inch can, pick OK, and drop one in here. Drop one in here. And then we're going to go to electrical symbols, wall lights. Um, and we want the contemporary. And I don't want my F11 on right now. I just want to place these there and there. Likewise, we can add in um, outlets. I've done an auto place outlets already in here, but uh, that's all that is. If I wanted to add any GFI lights or uh, outlets above the, the vanity, then those can be found under your standards. And just come into your 2Ds to find that. Now, the height on those may not be exactly what you want, but it's not far off. And you can center them up better. What uh, what happens to those when, because they have the GFI in the symbol, um, that's its bounding area. And so it will not center necessarily right on what you want it, where the actual plug is. But you can easily move those over to 
center them under the under the lights. And let's take a look at our 3D textured. So now you can see those items, and we can move them up and down in the 3D model quite easily. Just slide them down. Use the little red line that you see on those grids. To that's left, right. That's up and down. This is not what you want. That would be putting it outside the wall. This would be putting it out in front of the wall. So you can just move it down. Uh, same thing over here. And we can adjust the, the mirror, do whatever we need to. Um, they're not quite centered where we want them just yet. I guess I could move that one over a bit. There we go. And move this down. Okay. Now, editing the surfaces on the light. Um, you can change um, the way it glows by turning on your emissive and that just by doing that you'll see that they get brighter or less bright so if you want them to look like they're actually turned on turn the emissive on uh, on those shades they will actually start to show like they're turned on all right um, let's see so we're just about there uh, we haven't drawn in the faucets and so on in the shower I can come back to that now and Make sure we've saved everything. I'm going to drop in here. I'm going to go to um, I'm in electrical mode, so that's not, I'm not going to find any plumbing there. I'm going to go to draw symbol, and I'm just going to take a look at what we are looking to put in here. Let's say we want to put in uh, uh, the black slide bar with handle. Uh, it's just a so I'm going to type in, looking for something that the name will all, always show up. So you just pick and drop it. And the, the actual shower head itself is going to be um, uh, medium flow. So I'll type in medium flow. It's a Brizo as well. So if I was to actually go looking for it, um, I would look for Odin. There it is there, actually. I could use tub and shower or just the, just the shower only and just drop that in. Okay. And then what you want to do, if you if you want to put in any other textures to, to go in behind this, obviously, um, that's where you just simply go to draw and you can go back to your solid again. And you can do a plane or you could do a cube. If you want to show some thickness, you can draw a cube um, or just draw the plane in and just draw it across there. And then move it into place where you want it. Make sure it's in front of the drywall just slightly so that it is not clipping like we saw with the bottom of the shower door. And then you can edit that plane. And let's say we want to make it, uh, we're going to make it um, 18 inches wide. And I'm going to make it 7 feet tall. And it's offset. will be about 0.65 just to get it up there. And I'm just going to move it over just a little bit to get it centered a bit better. And then when we look at our 3D textures, you can see it there. And what you can do then is just move in. Here again, I'm just getting past the the, um, the glass. And then when you're editing this, if you wanted it to run the other way, it's automatically orienting in that direction. So I want to click on it and just check the check the rotate option to flip it the other way. Okay. And then what you can do is if you wanted to change the uh, the textures on these, I can click on this and click on that. Click on that. Oop, misclicked. There we go. Okay, to make them all the same. That stuff can be moved around. You can do whatever you need to with it from that point on. One last thing, um, given you may have some really good ideas of what you want for paint colors, um, that is something you can always modify after the fact. Click on that wall. What it did is it applied probably paint seven or paint two or something to the wall. I think we put paint two in. Um, 
paint two has been assigned a particular texture. That's not to say that's what you need to use, but you can see at the top, it tells you what the item is you just selected. And then what you can do is you can go into the texture color. And this is, this is already a, um, a Benjamin Moore Affinity color swatch, but we have different ones available to you. BM just refers to Benjamin Moore. You got your Racine, you got your Sherwin Williams colors down here as well, okay? So you can go in here, you can pick whatever you like from this from this list, um, and, and they're all there for you, okay? So if there's something along those lines you like, you can put that in. Something a little lighter, you can place that. And I'm just gonna throw this into a render just so we can see what we ended up with when we're all done all this today. Um, Oh, I just see there. It's moving around. I hadn't closed out of this dialog yet. There we go. So, um, what we are going to do is I'm going to uh, take us back here, save our drawing. In the textured view, I'm going to go into my options, and if I go into mode options, into the face options, you can see reflections there. Um, this will take a little bit more time, so I'm going to get it started and uh, you should see the results coming through. There again, just remember you can go in, you can change the, the opacity, the coloring of the glass. You can do all kinds of things to uh, dress your image up. Um, this will take a little bit of time to initially go through and, and calculate any reflections that we have off of the, um, off of the countertop, off, the, off of the mirror, which you can see coming in initially. So that's the first box going across there. It's picking up on those particular reflections. Uh, it's then going to go working across and it's going to pick up reflections on the shower doors and then work its way across and then down to the next row. So um, I hope you've picked up on lots of great tips today. I'm sorry that I ran over the hour a little bit for you, but I think you will um, be able to get a very photorealistic rendering if you just follow a few of the tips that you've learned today. Uh, the only other thing we didn't draw, we didn't draw in the towels on the shelf down below, but there again, it's much like drawing in any other symbol. Um, you just draw those in and then move them into place. So those, those can be found right in the bathroom library. Okay. So I thank you for joining me today. And um, as this is finishing up, I think you'll you'll start to see some of the shadows and so on. Uh, one of the other things I, I I probably should have brought to your attention is the countertop. We didn't really play with the texture of the countertop or the configuration of it. I just want to make you aware that in 2018 we also have a waterfall option, so you could actually curve that water that countertop and bring it down on the ends if that's something you'd like to see. Uh, we can also put a profile on the front edge of that countertop, so whether it's a um, um, just a chamfer or bevel on the front edge, or if you want it square, or whether you want a, a, a special shape, you can actually define that shape and apply it to the to the front edge of your, your countertops. So anyway, I thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've uh, learned a lot, and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you.